Hi, my name is Ron. I'm the head trader at Wall Street Sicarios. Today I'm going to show you how to set up your stock charts using TC2000. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to set up my own stock charts the way I personally like to use them. And at the same time, I'm going to go over what I believe are some of the best features that TC2000 has to offer. If you are looking for something specific, you can go ahead and check the description and I'll have all the chapters listed or you can scroll along the bottom of the video for the chapters listed as well. If you're a first time user to TC2000, I'll also leave a link for $25 off your first month in the comments in the description. Here we go. So when you open up TC2000, your platform will most likely be blank. All right, so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna wanna come down here to this little tab that says new layout tab and click that. When this window pops up, it's gonna give you a bunch of options. Over here are recent charts that you've used and over here are your saved layouts, okay? Right here on this right-hand side are the pre-built layouts that come with TC2000. You could go ahead and select some of these if these look interesting to you, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from scratch and add everything I need. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this one chart right here, and that's gonna open up a new layout. So right now, it already comes with the Bollinger Bands added. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to delete that. I'm just gonna click up here on the top left where it says Bollinger Bands and I'm going to remove that. That's gonna remove the Bollinger Bands off of your chart and now you're gonna have a clean slate to work with. The next thing we're going to do is change how our charts look. So we're gonna right click on the chart and go right here to Edit Chart Properties. It's gonna bring up this Chart Properties box with these little tabs inside. The first tab we're gonna to go to is Price Style. Now when you open it, it's probably gonna be on HLC bar. That is these bars right here that represents the price of the stock. I'm gonna change this to candlestick. Now you can see that they've changed. Some of them are hollow, some of them are filled, and they look completely different. Next thing I'm going to do is go to color based on and change this open versus close. That means that when the stock closes higher than it opens, it's going to be a certain color, which right now is selected green. And when it closes lower than it opens, it's going to be red. I'm gonna keep these colors the same because that's what I prefer. Next is the fill. You can see right here how these red candles are filled and the green ones are hollow. So that means the up bars are hollow, the red lower candles are closed, and I'm also gonna keep that the same. If you want them all filled, you can click filled next to up bars. You can see that now all the bars are filled. They're not hollow, they are now a solid color. So I'm going to keep my green bars hollow because that's what I personally prefer. A lot of this will be personal preference. So feel free to set up your charts however you would like. Show yesterday's clothesline. We're going to keep that checked for now. Show bid and ask. So right over here in the right side of your screen, you can see there's these little numbers. That's the bid and the ask spread. You can keep these numbers there if you would like or you can take them off. I personally like to have the bid and ask spread there. I'm gonna keep this box right here, calculate scale from price selected. And then if you want your candlesticks to, to not be so bright, you can also change the opacity of them, right? You can make them disappear completely. And then you can change the brightness with this slider right here. We'll go over more of these options later on in the video when we get to them. But for right now, I will go over this color grid. So the back color is this color of the chart right now. You can see it's kind of like a grayish black. So we can change that to blue if we want. We can change it to green just by selecting this. I'm gonna keep it back where it was. And then you could also add a gradient if you wanted. So you could add two colors. This is the top color and this is the bottom color, right? So I'm just gonna keep mine black for now. So the value grid lines are grid lines that appear at the prices, at these price increments on the right side of your chart. By sliding the slider to the right, it makes them more visible. By sliding it to the left, it keep, makes them invisible. The date grid lines are the exact opposite. They go vertical up your screen at the date marks, right? So look, right here you can see these, and then when you slide it to the left, they're gone. The symbol watermark is this right here. This is the actual ticker of the stock and the name of the company. If you don't want to see that, you slide it to the left. If you want to see it, you can slide it to the right, just like the date and value lines. The more you slide it to the right, the brighter it gets. Now the value scale size is the size of these numbers. 
So if you want these to be bigger, then you can just make them bigger by sliding this to the right. The date scale size is the exact same thing. The size of the text of the date right here, if you slide it to the right, they get bigger. If you slide it to the left, they get smaller. I'm going to keep the rest the same. This date margin right here is this gap in between the price of the stock and the values. So if you make this smaller, this gap between the value, the price, and between the candlesticks will get smaller. You see how the candlesticks move closer to the price. I like to just keep mine at 5% and you can actually change that manually right here. So if you want to just slide that over whenever you want, you can do that as well. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our indicators and our moving averages to our charts. There's two ways you can do this. The first is at the top left of your screen, next to the ticker symbol, there's a green plus sign. You can click it and a window will pop up with different indicators and you can add it that way. Or you can right click and then select add plot. Both are the same thing. So you have a list right here of indicators you can choose from and different lists. I am just going to search. The first thing I'm going to add is volume. I'm going to search for it and then it pops up volume indicator. I'm just going to click on volume. All right, I'm going to keep that how it is. You can see that there's a moving average on the volume. Here's the moving average right here listed. It's the 50 day moving average. I'm going to keep that there. If you want to edit it, just click on it, click edit. And then this window will pop up. You can change the period to like a 20. You could also change the style to a dash style or a dotted line. And you can change the thickness of it by just selecting this. You can also change the color. if You want it to be a different color and you can change the opacity. All right, so we'll keep it like this. And then if you want to make this smaller, you just move your mouse over this line until it switches to this double arrow. Grab it by clicking, left clicking and holding, and you can slide that down. All right, the next thing we're going to add is moving averages. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna right click, add plot, and I'm going to search for moving average. Now for this, I'm going to add moving average simple. So you have a couple options. You can add the moving average to the volume or to the symbol. Make sure that if you're trying to put this moving average on your stock chart, you want to add it to the symbol. If you want to put another moving average down here at the volume, that's how you would do it. I'm going to click the symbol. And now I have a 50 day moving average on my chart. And we can edit this moving average the same way we edited this moving average. Left click on it click edit and then you can see we can change the color and we can change the thickness, the style and everything else the same as we changed the other one over here. I'm going to keep it like this. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to right click, add plot, moving average, simple, select the ticker symbol and I'm going to change this to 20. I'm going to change the color to blue and I'm gonna keep it like that. I'm gonna do it one more time for another simple moving average. Then I'm gonna edit it by left clicking, edit, and I'm gonna change this to 200. So now I have the 200, the 50, and the 20 day simple moving average on my chart. I'm going to add one more moving average by right clicking, and I'm going to add an exponential moving average this time. I'm going to click the symbol and there it is. Exponential, you can see right here it says moving average 200 and this says EXP moving average. I'm gonna edit that and I'm going to put nine. This is known as the nine EMA. This is like the immediate moving average. There's one more thing I'm going to add and it's going to be stochastics. So I'm gonna right click again, add plot, search for stochastics. Here it is, indicator. That's gonna pop up right here. And I'm going to change these values by clicking on stochastics 12% K3. And I'm going to change this period to five. The K is already at three. Okay, and then I'm going to change this percentage right here by clicking on it. And I'm gonna change that to three as well. 
Again, a lot of this is personal preference. And now we can see that our volume is on top of our stochastics. If you wanna switch these around and put your stochastics on top of your volume, you can do that as well. If you're using a newer version of TC2000, like version 23, you will just grab the indicator right here and move it where you want to. You can see right here, there's an orange line that appears. If you let go, now they're switched. If you wanna move it somewhere else, like up here, you can move it right there. And if you wanna overlay it on top of your price chart, you look for that square and then let go and now it's overlaid on top of your price chart. But we're going to stick it right back here. And if you are using an older version of TC2000, then you will move it by clicking these little arrows right here in the bottom left next to stochastics. You can click this and if you hover over it, it will say move, click those arrows and now this is gonna ask you where do you want to put it. So if you insert it here, it's going to move it on top of the volume. If you insert it here, where it says insert here at the top of your screen, it's going to move it to the very top of the actual price chart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert it here, and now our stochastics and our volume are switched around. Now this is my daily chart, and you can tell it's a daily chart by going to the top left and looking at the symbol. Next to the symbol, it says day. What that means is that each one of these candlesticks right here represents what the price of the stock did within one day. If you want to change that, you move to the top left of your screen next to the ticker symbol, and you'll see this little box that says day. Yours might say something different. If you click this, this little box pops up, and now you have a lot of options. If you wanna change what these bars represent to something different, this is all you have to do. If you want them to represent one hour, click on hour. Now, each one of these bars represents what the stock did within the last hour. If you want it to represent five minutes, you click on five minutes. Now, each one of these bars represents what the price of the stock did every five minutes. I'm gonna keep this selected on daily because this is my daily chart. Okay, so now that we have our daily chart set up, what we're gonna do is we're going to do two things. We're gonna save the layout. So we're gonna come up here to the top left of our screen and click File, Save Layout As and then we're gonna type in tutorial layout. You can type in whatever you would like and then just click save. The second thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna save our chart setup. We're gonna save all of these moving averages, the stochastics and the volume so that if we ever want to open up this identical chart setup on another chart, we can do that easily. So we come to the top right of our screen, right up here where all these symbols are just above the percentage mark, and you'll see a little floppy disk. If you hover your mouse over that, it's gonna say save chart. Left click on the floppy disk and then click save chart as. Then this little box pops up. I'm going to name mine tutorial daily. You can name yours whatever you would like. Click save. And now this chart setup is saved. So now if I come down here to the bottom of the screen and click on this new layout tab button, let's say I go back to the one chart. So now if I want to load the chart that I just made, I come up here to the top left of my screen next to the ticker symbol and a few symbols over, there's a little file folder. And if you hover your mouse on it, it's gonna say open chart template. So I click on that. If you don't see it here, you can search for it. If you have like a lot of charts, you can search for it. But if not, I can find it right here, tutorial daily, click on that. And now our chart is opened up, just how we saved it. So now we're gonna add our intraday chart next to this daily chart. So we're gonna come up to the top left of the screen and click on new and then chart. That's gonna open up this new chart in the middle of our screen. Right now, this chart will kind of move off of the screen, but it's really stuck inside of TC2000. If we have another monitor, we cannot move it onto that new monitor. If you would like to float this and move it onto a whole other monitor, you need to click this crosshair at the top right of the chart window and then click float in new window layout. Now we are able to actually move it off the screen onto a whole other monitor. For right now though, we're gonna click the crosshair and we're gonna click move. What that's gonna do is gonna bring up this other window with these little arrows. What it's asking us is where do we want to place the window? So if we push this top arrow, it's gonna place the new chart on top of the chart we already have. If we place the down arrow, it's gonna place it underneath the chart. So what we're gonna do is click this right arrow, and what that's gonna do, it's gonna place our new chart right here to the right side of our daily chart. 
Now we could load this saved layout onto this chart like we have already done earlier, but we don't want the exact same layout. Since this is an intraday chart, we are going to use different moving averages and we won't need stochastics. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here next to the symbol and I'm gonna change the time frame to five minute. I'm gonna do that by clicking on this D or wherever it says day if you're on an older version of TC2000 and then I'm gonna click on five minute. If you want it to be a different time frame, like a two minute or three minute, you can do that as well. If you don't see one minute or five minute or any of these other time frames available, what you can do is click on this edit time frame settings. That's gonna pop up the available time frames that you can use. If you don't see five minutes available, then just make sure that five minute is checked and that should be okay. So now that you have the time frame selected, what we're going to do is go over some of these options on the chart. You can see right here at the top of your screen, on the top right of your screen where it says regular hours, this is how you toggle on and off the pre-market data. So if you click this button before the market is open, then you will have an option to include pre-market. Since the market is closed right now and it's after hours, we have an option to include post-market data. What that's gonna do, it's gonna turn on the post-market price action. All right, if you don't wanna see that, just click this to show regular hours. Now we're going to right click and edit chart properties. We're gonna come over here to pre-post data and this will give you the option as well to turn on post-market or pre-market data. So if you click always show last two sessions, it's gonna show you the post-market from the last session as well as today's session. If you click never, then it will never show you any post or pre-market data. If you select this when pre-post is selected in top right, then that's when this option up here that we talked about just a minute ago is going to come into play. Then this button right here will be able to include the post-market data. If we have never selected and we try to click to include post-market data, it's not going to include the post-market data. So make sure if you're trying to include pre-market or post-market data that you have this option selected when pre-post is selected in top right. One thing I like to have on my intraday charts is this line right here. You see this little dashed line. This is the previous day's closing price. So that's important to me when I'm trading because I don't have to look at the daily chart. I can actually see the previous day's closing price just by looking at my intraday chart. And the way we turn that on and off is we right click and go to edit chart properties we click on price style and then right over here you can see it says show yesterday's clothesline. You can change the color of it and you can also change the opacity. So 50% is about 50% opacity. If you want it to be brighter, you click on 100. If you want it to be gone and not even be there, you could click zero or you could just uncheck the button. You can also show today's open line by selecting this box and you can do the same thing. You can change the color. I'm going to keep mine off because that's how I prefer it. And here's the option that displays the bid ask spread, which is these little triangles with the values next to them. If you want them on, you select the box. It's the same thing as on our daily chart. Now I'm going to change my color based on open versus close. And I'm going to keep the up bars and the down bars the same as my daily chart. Up bars hollow and green and my down bars filled and red. Click OK. Now the next thing we need to do is add our moving averages. So if we want to add our moving averages to the intraday chart, it's the same way as the daily chart. We're going to right click and click add plot, type in moving average. I'm gonna click on exponential since I use exponential moving averages on my intraday chart. Click the symbol. Once it's on my chart, I'm gonna come up here to the top left of the price chart, click on the exponential moving average 50, edit that and I'm going to change this to 20. Then I'm going to do the same thing again. Right click, add plot, moving average, exponential, add it to the symbol. Then I'm going to come up to the top left again, click on exponential moving average 50, edit it, and I'm going to change this to nine and I'm going to change the color to white. Everything else looks fine. 
I'm gonna click OK. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add volume to my intraday chart. So we can right click again and click add plot or we can come up here to the top left of the screen and click the green plus symbol next to the stock ticker. If we click that, it brings up the search bar. Search volume and we click on volume indicator. Now we have our volume selected. If we want to edit the volume characteristics, click on volume in the top left of the volume indicator screen. And we can have these also colored by up bars, green, down bars, red. We could also change the volume to a line graph, to dots, to area. I like to keep mine on bars. All right, now the next thing we're going to add is the view app. So we're gonna right click, add plot, type in view app and then click on view app indicator and then select the stock ticker. Now we've set up our candlesticks, our nine EMA, our 20 EMA and our view app on our intraday chart. So what we have here is the daily chart and then we have a five minute intraday chart. So now that we have the intraday chart set up, we are going to save the intraday chart by coming to the top right of the screen to the little floppy disk. We're gonna click on save chart then we're going to name it. You can name it whatever you like. I'm going to name mine tutorial intraday. Click yes, save. All right, now it's saved. So that means that if we ever open up a new blank chart, we can go ahead and load this chart the same way we did before by coming up here to this top toolbar, finding the little folder button that says open chart template, click on it, and then we find tutorial intraday and it will open up this style of chart. So it makes it a lot easier in case you lose charts, you want to make a new layout. So the next thing we're going to do is create a watch list. So we're going to come up here to the top left screen where it says new and we are going to click it and we're going to find personal watch list. When you click that, it's going to ask you what you want to name it. If you're on an old version of TC2000, you will not see image or the color. If you're on a new version, version 23 or newer, you will click this image button. You can select an image if you would like to and you can select a color for it too as well. We're gonna keep these the same and I'm gonna name this tutorial watch list. What that's gonna do, it's gonna create the watch list. Now we have our watch list and if we want to add a symbol to this watch list, what we can do is we can click right here at the top right of the watch list where it says add symbols to watch list. If we click that and you know a ticker that you want to add already, let's just say Roku, we can type in Roku and it's going to add Roku automatically to the watch list. So if we want to add SWKS to this watch list, we have a couple options. We can come up here to this little calculator in the top left of the screen in the toolbar and you can click it and select the watch list we just made. Scroll down through all your watch lists and find the watch list you just made, tutorial watch list. Click on that and it will add it to the watch list. If you want to remove the symbol, you come up here next to where you added it and you just click this little X and it removes it. We can also add the ticker to our watch list by right clicking on the chart, selecting copy SWKS2 and then finding the watch list here, tutorial watch list. Now, since I don't want my watch list just floating around, I'm going to stick it in between these two charts. So I'm going to come up here to the top of the watch list window and I'm going to find this little crosshair where it says move window. I'm going to select it and I'm going to click move. It's going to ask me where I want to put it. I'm going to push this left arrow or I'm going to push this right arrow over here on the left chart. That's going to put the watch list in between our charts. Now, if you ever want to move this chart or this watch list and make them smaller or bigger, you just come over here next to the price axis until your mouse cursor turns into this double arrow, left click, and then you can slide it over. You can do the same thing with this chart, slide over till it becomes a double arrow, left click, and then slide it over. That way you can make your watch list more narrow and you can also grab them both at the same time and expand this chart on the right or you can grab it over here and expand this chart on the left. We'll just keep this watch list like this for now. Let's go ahead and save the layout so that we don't lose it. So let's come up here to the top left of the screen, click File, Save Layout As, 
and I'm gonna name mine daily and intraday tutorial. Click save. Now this layout has been saved. So let's say we start with a clean slate one day. So let's say we come down here to the bottom tab where it says new layout tab. We click on it. We come to my layouts and we find daily intraday tutorial. We select that and there you go. We have an identical layout made right from scratch. We never have to waste our time making these layouts again. Here's the one we started with. Here's the new one we just now opened. All right, if you wanna close these tabs down here, just right click, close with saving or close without saving. Now that we have our watch list built, let's talk about the watch list a little bit. You have these columns up top, all right? If you want to change the size of these and make the text bigger, what we can do is click on this watch list menu. It's these little lines next to this color and we can actually go to watch list properties. Now we can change the font size and make that font bigger so we can read it a lot easier. You can also change the background color of your watch list by selecting back color and changing it to another color if you would like. And you can also change the grid color, which is these little lines in between the columns. So if you want those to change to like red, now you can see that your grid is red. I'm gonna keep these the gray color. Now we have our actual columns themselves. So let's say we wanted to add another column here or we wanted to add another bit of criteria here, like maybe the market cap. So what we can do is we can select this orange plus next to the last column. Now, if you're on an older version of TC2000, you're going to have to expand this watch list to be able to see this plus. If you're on a newer version of TC2000, like version 23 or newer, you have a little scroll bar here at the bottom and you can actually just scroll over left and right and that will bring up this plus sign. So let's say we wanna add market cap. We'll click on add value column and we'll type in capitalization and now it adds it to those columns. So now we have a whole new column just for capitalization. So if you want to move the location of this, you can left click it, grab it, and then wherever you see this orange line appear and you let go, that's where it's going to be now. Also, you can right click the column set and click edit all columns. You can see that capitalization is over here. So if you want to just move it higher, you can do that as well. You pretty much just move it wherever you want to. Now, if you want to filter just by market caps, let's say you wanted to use market cap to filter in between a certain amount, you can actually click this filter column right here, and then it's gonna bring up this other options. If you click where it says like 9K or whatever number it is right here, you can select greater than, if you select less than, you can input an amount, and then in between, you can select an amount, in between the minimum and maximum, okay? and that will filter out your watch list based on the market cap. If you see this little blue symbol right here, it's being filtered. If you do wanna stop filtering by market cap, just click that and it will turn the filter off. Okay, we have our column set how we want to, let's click okay. Now, if you're on an older version of TC2000 and you want to rearrange these columns, then what you'll have to do is you'll have to open this up until you see the little orange plus sign over here in the top right of the watch list. Click that plus sign, go down to edit column set, and then you have all the columns listed right here. So if you wanted to move one of these, like this liquid gainers right here over to the left, then what you do is you select it and then click the arrow up and you'll be able to watch it move to where it needs to go. And if you want to add a new column, you just click this add column and then find the column you want to add, select it, and then you'll see it get added right there. Click OK. Now, if you want to save these, like let's say you add about 10 or 11 columns and you want to save them as a set. So when you open up a new watch list, you can load that. So you can right click and you can save all columns as a group. So let's say we save this column as a group. Let's save it. And then we, we can save it as a default watch list so that every time we open a watch list, these are the default columns that appear by selecting system watch list. If we want our industry group watch list, we select this. And if we want it to, for our personal watch list, we select it to save as the default for. If we don't wanna save it as a default, we just wanna save it as this name, we click save as, type in the name, and then click save. So next time, if we open up a new watch list, we come up here, open a new watch list. 
Now the watch list columns are gonna be slightly different. So what we can do is we can right click on the top column and select replace all columns. And we come down here to tutorial group. And now we've got the same columns that we have right here that we saved. So let's say we had a different watch list open and we want to change it back to the watch list we just had. We come up here to the top left of our screen where it says watch list, click on it, come over here to personal and then find the watch list we just now made, tutorial watch list, click on that and now we have our watch list back open. You can also just select the watch list right here if you want to replace this watch list, select the name of it, come over here to personal, come down to tutorial watch list, click on it and now you've replaced this watch list with the one we had saved. That's how you go to different watch lists. You just click the name of the watch list right here and then you can actually add in all your watch lists that you already saved just by finding whichever one you want and then clicking on that. If these columns are small and you can't read them, you just come up here, slide your mouse over till it turns into a double arrow, left click and then slide these over to expand them so now you can read them. If you want to sort by your a certain column, click on the column and now this little arrow appears to notify you that you're sorting by that column and you can see right here we're sorting in alphabetical order. We can also click again to sort the opposite. So if you want to sort by percentage change, you click on percentage change. Right now it's going from the highest percentage change to the lowest and if you want to reverse that you click on that again and it will reverse the percentage from lowest to highest. Same thing goes with price, highest to lowest, click it again, lowest to highest. So there's a symbol link in the top of your watch list. At the very top right, where these little icons are, you see this little S with an arrow on it. And it says symbol link when you hover your mouse over it. There's the same symbols on your charts. If you look at the top right of this daily chart, and if you look at the top right of this intraday chart, what the symbol link does is it links this watch list to these charts. Whichever watch list or charts have the same color symbol link, they will display the same symbol. For example, let's say I change this to red. And now if I go down my watch list, the daily chart doesn't change, but the intraday chart changes. The intraday chart has a green symbol link and so does the watch list. But now that the daily chart has a red symbol link, it does not change with the watch list. So if we want all of these charts to change together, then we go down and we select the same color on all of them. Now, if we switch through this watch list and switch to another symbol, both the charts change with the watch list. This is useful if you're using multiple charts to watch the same symbol on different time frames. So let's say I added two more charts here and all of them were different time frames and they were all linked together they will all change at the same time so I can analyze different time frames at the same time. Just keep that in mind in case you are trying to switch through a watch list and the charts don't happen to change with the watch list. The next thing I'm going to talk about are some tools that TC2000 has to offer that I use quite frequently. If you look up here on the top right of your daily chart or intraday chart, there's like a little palette, like a paint palette looking thing. If you click on that, it expands this toolbar option. You have a lot of different options in here. This is where you get your trend lines from. So you're here, if you click this little line, it's a trend line. So let's say we wanna make a trend line on Baidu. You just left click the mouse button, hold it, slide it over, release it, and now you've got a trend line there. You can also edit these trend lines. If you right click on the trend line itself, you can click edit and you can actually make it thicker. You can change the color, whatever you would like. If you want to delete it, you can right click on it and click delete. That will delete it. Or you can come up here to the toolbar and grab this eraser and then you can just click right on it with the eraser. All right, this little fist right here just allows you to grab the chart and slide it over without having to use this scroll bar right here at the bottom. You just left click, slide it over and move it back. There's a, a lot of different tools here, there's some text, All right, you can put some text on your charts for your entries and exits. You can also edit the text if you come over here and click on it and this click this little arrow button, 
you can change the color of the text and you can change the size of it as well by clicking on these arrows. All right. If you want to delete that, it's the same way. You can right click, delete it, or you can click on the eraser button and delete it that way. There's Fibonacci arcs, there's Fibonacci retracements, and there's a lot of options down here. These little squares and circles and things like that. It's really up to you if you want to use them or not, but they come in handy. Now there's a, there's a box right here at the top. It's a crosshair with the data. This one right here to the right of it is just a crosshair. So if we have the crosshair with data selected and we click on this day, if you look at the top left of the screen, a little box pops up. It tells you the statistics of the stock. You can see it tells you the volume, it tells you the date selected, tells you the open, the high and the low prices for the day. And it tells you where your moving averages sit. So if we were to have a chart with three or four moving averages on here, all the prices for the moving averages would be listed. If you don't want to see that box when you click on your charts, you just click this little crosshair without the data box next to it. And you can see that nothing pops up when you click on your chart besides the crosshair. If you want to see the names of these tools and more information, you click this more button and they will pop up right here. There's a lot of different boards and what boards are, they are the charts, but they are used for putting different drawings or different information on one chart. So let's say I wanted to add a line right here on my chart to represent resistance. So let's say that after I add this line, it's showing up on my intraday chart but I don't want to see it on my intraday chart. What I can do is I can select another board. And now since I'm on another board, any symbols on this number five board will not be visible. So if I go to my spy chart on my daily chart and I look at board three, you can't see anything besides my moving average. But if I go to board number one, you'll see all types of trend lines, circles, resistance, and support listed. All right. So the boards help you keep a clean slate, on different boards so that they don't interfere with your technical analysis on different boards. Then come up to the top left of your screen and go to tools, system settings, click on charts, and then come down here in the general settings and you'll see this box next to include extra drawing boards. If you click that box, it's going to add your extra drawing boards right here. If you don't wanna see anything here, just click this paint palette, it will disappear and just leave your price axis. You can do the same thing on your intraday charts to hide the tools. Now I'm going to talk about the different scaling options that these charts offer. So you can see right here on the right side on this intraday chart, this range looks very small and it's really hard to get like a good feel for what's going on in terms of price action. The chart right now is set to a RITH. Over here, my daily chart is set to a RITH as well. If I want to get a closer look at the price action and really see what's going on, I can come over here to the bottom right of my screen and click this a RITH and it will give me a few different options. If I click on log, then it changes the chart to a log chart. What I like to do is click on this other scale type called true return. If you're on the old version of TC2000, this will be called the locked log, but it's virtually the same thing. So if we click on this true return, it's going to change the way our chart looks for a minute. You can select automatic and use this slider. And what that does is it will expand your candlesticks and it will also expand the price axis. If you want to change the percentage of the grid, you can, and you can use this slider to actually slide this over and make the percentages grow in between the price axis. You can also click on this box that says show S and P 500 to create a line graph of the S&P 500's performance. And you can also change the color of it too. I usually just keep this off. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select manual. Now with manual selected, you can change the percentage amount in between these grid lines. Like if you watch right here, this says 5435, this says 5458. If you click that, now it's changed to 5447 and 5458. If you want to change the number of grid lines and make them tighter, you can add more grid lines or you can remove them. If you actually had the lines here visible, you would be able to see that better. Now, what you can also do and what I like to do is I like to keep it on manual and then I can come over here with my mouse wheel. And if I hover over this 0.4% with my mouse wheel, I can actually move that up and down by rolling my mouse wheel. Then I can grab these little arrows right here I just hover over them until my mouse cursor turns into the double arrow and I can adjust these. Now what I can do is I can also hover on the price axis 
and change the percentage just by rolling my mouse wheel as well. That helps me get a better in-depth analysis. Where this comes into play for me most of the time is when I'm trading on these thumbnail charts. You can see right here, I have all my thumbnail charts selected on the true return. That way when I'm day trading, I can actually get a very in-depth analysis. You can see right here on ATVI. So let's say we put this ATVI on a Rith, okay? All right, so if this is what we're watching at the open, even if we expand the Arith chart as much as we can, we can't really get like a close up look of what's going on. If we select the true return and use our mouse wheel to adjust the chart, we can really get an in depth, close look at the price action on the lower time frames or on any time frames. This is really helpful on stocks that are gapping up or down because when they gap up and down, the Arith just doesn't seem to work the greatest for analyzing those like we talked about before. This is what it would look like on the Arith chart, okay? No matter what we do, we can't really get a good close look at that compared to this using the true return or the locked log on the old version of TC2000. Now we're gonna talk about scans and creating custom scans. Creating the scan in version 23 of TC2000 is the same as the old versions, but running the scan is a little bit different. So first I'm gonna show you how to do it on version 23, then I'm gonna show you how to do it on any older versions. So if you come up here to the very top left of your screen where it says Easy Scan, click on Easy Scan. There's already a lot of different options, pre-built scans and things, um, but if you want to create your own custom scan, we're going to click here on New Condition. Once you click on new condition, this box is going to pop up. So for this example, we're just going to create a basic scan. I'm gonna name it pre-market. The first thing I'm going to do is select add condition. Then it's gonna ask me if I want to write a formula, which I'm not going to do. If I wanted to though, I could use a custom formula here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a condition. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is add price. If it's not here selected, you can search. And then you can click price, right? It's going to give you a lot of different options. I'm just going to click price by itself, price history. The first thing that's going to happen, it's going to ask me a variety of different options. Greater than, less than, in between, ranks, and so on and so forth. I'm going to click greater than. Then I'm gonna set the value at two. So what I'm telling it is that I want to search for stocks with the price history greater than $2. Then under this true option, I can select an X number of bars. So what that's saying is the price history of $2. Like let's say if I were to add so many bars ago, five bars ago, so if the price history was greater than $2 five bars ago or within the last so many bars, right? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to select now. What I'm telling the scan is that I want to find stocks that have a price history greater than $2 currently. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this plus sign to add another condition. I'm going to choose conditions and I'm going to type in volume. I'm going to click volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select greater than again, and I'm going to type in 10,000. And as of right now, all right. So now what it's saying is that I want to find stocks over $2 with the current volume of over 10,000 shares traded. And I'm going to search for volume 90 days. This means that I'm looking for stocks with an average volume over 90 days. Now, if you want to change that, you can click right here and type 30. So now it's average volume over 30 days. What I'm going to type in is 500,000. So now this scan is going to search for stocks over $2 with a current volume over 10,000 shares and with an average volume over 30 days. It says 90, but it's really 30. We can actually rename this not 30. Now it's going to search for stocks over $2 with the current volume over 10,000 shares traded with an average volume over the past 30 days of at least 500,000 shares. I already have the name selected. 
pre-market tutorial. I save that, it's already in here, so I click save. Now my scan is saved. So what I'm gonna do now is if I wanna use that scan, I'm gonna come to the watch list that I want to use the scan on. There's a variety of watch lists already pre-built. See right here, there's industry indexes, there's US indexes, I have a master stock list that I've been creating that has over 10,000 stocks on it and I'm going to use that list. When you have the list open, there's a button right here that says filter. If you click on edit next to filter, it's going to come up with all of these columns. So if you wanted to scan by your columns, you can do that as well. Like let's say that you wanted to use your percentage change and you wanted to scan all the stocks in this watch list by a certain percentage change. You could click on this value next to percentage and you could do the same thing we did in the easy scan. You can select greater than, less than, is between, and all the same options. So we could actually put percentage change greater than 5% currently and push okay. And as long as this little blue symbol is selected, now we're filtering all the stocks in this list by the percentage change. You have an option down here at the bottom that says must pass all filters, which means it must pass every filter that's turned on. And as long as the stocks pass all these filters, then it will show up. Or you can select this option that says only needs to pass any filter. That means it just has to pass one of these filters to show up on the list. All right, but I'm not gonna select those. That's if you wanna filter by your column sets. If you want to use the custom scan we just made, you're gonna to have to select this plus button right here at the bottom, and you're gonna add a true false column, and then you're gonna select the scan we just made, which is the pre-market tutorial. You're gonna click this button, and now it's going to filter all the stocks that meet the criteria on our pre-market tutorial scan. Since the pre-market tutorial has different criteria within the scan, we need to select must pass all filters. If you want to change different criteria of the scan, just click on it and it will bring up the options again and you can go ahead and add or remove different criteria. Just click on the scan itself and it will bring up the initial scan that we created and you can go ahead and customize these. You can add or remove them. If you want to remove a filter, right click, delete. If you want to add it, just click the plus button choose conditions, and then go ahead and add that back. Once you have that and you have you make sure that this button is selected and it's scanning, then you close this and all these stocks meet the criteria of our new easy scan we created. If you wanna turn off the filter, just click this check mark right here at the top of the watch list next to the watch list name filter and it will bring you back to your original list. If you're using an older version of TC2000, then the scans are created the same way. If you wanna run the scan, you come up here to the top of your watch list and you select the watch list that you want to run the scan on. Once you have that watch list selected, right next to the name of the watch list is a little box that says scan right next to it. If you click this box, your most recent scan is gonna come up and start scanning. If you click the name of the scan right here underneath the name of the watch list, you will see the criteria used within the scan. If you wanna change that, you just click on the criteria itself and you can enter the different values. If you want to add criteria, you select this little plus button and it will let you add different criteria to your scan. If you wanna change what scan is being used, you click this little file folder box that says replace conditions. If you click on that, now you can come down here and run a different scan and then when you want to run it, you just click OK, and now your watch list is being filtered by that scan. If you want to stop scanning, just click the button, and now the scan turns off. If you would like to set up multiple charts like this right here, a multiple chart layout, then what you would do is you would go to a blank layout by clicking this little button at the bottom, and you could actually start with one of these like four time frames if you wanted, then all you'd have to do to add more charts is just click charts, blank chart, select this, move it, click right here next to this one, select new chart, select move, select right here next to this one. 
Now you have six charts. You have your watch list here already. If this wasn't there, you could just come up here to the top left of your screen, new, personal watch list, name it whatever you would like, okay. Your watch list comes up. You click the little crosshair, move, click move, and now you can select this little arrow right here and it's back here, right? So you have a watch list right here and now you have your multiple charts. And then all you would have to do to load these up with your custom settings is come up here to the top of one of your charts, click the little file folder that says open chart template, click on whatever chart you have saved that you would like, click on that and now your chart is actually opened up with the settings that we already have. You can do that with each chart. Come back up here, click the open chart template, tutorial of your day, and now you will be set up on all these charts. So that's how you create a multiple chart layout. If you would like to customize the top toolbar here on your charts, just come up here to the toolbar, right click on it, and select edit toolbar. Now you'll see some options pop up. You can change these symbols, like you can get rid of some if you want. You can delete this whole row right here by just clicking this X. If you wanted to add a new field, you click on this little orange plus sign and it will actually give you a lot of different options. Let's say you wanted to add the capitalization up here. You could scroll down to fundamentals and select capitalization. Then what's gonna happen is it's gonna ask you the font size, so you can make this bigger if you want. You can put it in bold, you can put it in italics. You can change the spacing between the fields by just selecting this left or right margin. You can make the background color different by selecting fill background and then changing to a different color so it's actually a different color so you can see it easier. There's a lot of things you can do right here. All right, so let's say we add that right there. Now it's gonna show up, the, the capitalization is gonna show up. If you wanna remove that, just right click and remove field. Yes, and now it's gone. If you would like to see more time frames visible across this top bar, you can do that as well. You can come up to the top left of your screen wherever the time frame is visible, click on the time frame, then click on edit time frame settings. If you select show selected time frames as buttons on chart, now you can see that it's showing all the time frames you have selected as their own separate buttons. So that way you don't have to click the drop down. You can just actually come across here and change the time frames faster. If you would like to set an alert to be notified via text message or email when a stock hits a certain price, you can do that by coming up to the top left of your screen and selecting tools, then coming down to system settings, scroll over to alert notifications, and then right here where it says add email or phone, you click on that, type in the email you would like, or you can also select text message for the phone number you would like to be notified at. Click OK. It will also ask you if you want the pop-up message to pop up on the platform itself and with an alert sound and you can choose the alert sound right here. So you can select play. And that's the alert sound that will happen when the certain price gets hit. After that setup, you will be able to get notifications via text or email. What you will need to do next is come up to the top left of your screen where it says alerts, click on it, click on set alert, and then you have price, conditions, or just reminders of certain things. I'm going to click on price. All right, and now you can see where it has the symbol of the stock. You can change that if you would like. We'll keep it at BBIO. Alert price, we'll keep it at 1477. You can also restart the alert after it triggers. So that means that once the alert triggers, if you want it to alert you again the next time it crosses 1477, you can do that by selecting this box and selecting when you want it to. So if it triggered right here at 1477 and you wanted to keep alerting you, you could select one minute later, five minutes later, one hour later, or the next day. So that way, if you had the next day selected, it might cross 1477 today, but it won't alert you the next time until it crosses the next day. You can select this time frame so that TC2000 will continue to alert you for the next year or two years or one day or however long you want that alert to last for. You can write a description so you remember what you were looking for, and then you can either use the default notification settings or you can use these settings. All right, then it's gonna ask you where you want to be emailed. Then it's gonna ask you if you want to be alerted by email or phone, you select that. It's gonna ask you about the pop-up message and the alert sound, you click okay. And then now the alert has been created.
if you want to see all the alerts that you have created, you can come up here again to the alerts panel and click alert console. And then now you will see all the alerts you have right now. And then what you can do is you can stop the alert right here by just coming over here and clicking stop monitoring. That will delete the alert. If you want to show previous alerts that you've had, you can click on show old items right here in the alert window and you will see a list of all the alerts that you've created previously. Now I'm going to show you how to add a custom indicator to the top of your charts. You can see right here on my watch list, I have a custom column right here made. If you hover over this column, left click and then drag it over to your chart, you will get a custom indicator on the top of your chart representing the formula that's in this column. If you want to remove the indicator, you can just click the X and remove it. You can place it over the chart and see right here. So you can see the stock's performance relative to your custom indicator. If you want to remove it from there, you come up here to the top of your chart, click on the indicator and then click remove. You can also place it anywhere else on the chart, like above the volume, above your stochastics. So it has to either be above the chart, on the chart or below it. So that's all I have for this video. If you have any other questions, leave me a comment down below and I'll do my very best to get back to you with an answer. Have a good day.